Hi everyone, my name is Opal Altaloon. It's really nice to meet you. I'm a 2D VTuber, and I figured out how to rig hands. So I want to teach you this so you too can rig hands for your own 2D VTuber model. This video series did take a lot of time and work for me to make, so if you do find it useful, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me on Twitch. Also, to stay up to date on my future projects, as well as when I stream, feel free to join my Discord channel as well. I'll put a link in the description below for both my Twitch page and Discord channel for your convenience. Welcome to my very first YouTube tutorial. Before we begin, there's a few things I want to go over with you all. First, I want to bring your attention to a hand-raking tutorial asset shop that I set up for you all. Full disclosure, you do not need to purchase any of the stuff available in here to follow along in this tutorial. It's only here to help you as a supplementary resource. The first thing I want to show you is there is a free hand-raking guide available. This guide will help you with how to label and manage layers of the hands of your model, It'll show you all of the hand rigging parameters available to use. And it will give you details of the parameters I use for hand rigging and their settings in Live 2D. Following that is the option to just purchase the Photoshop file. So you will get only the Photoshop file ready to import into Live 2D to start rigging. This is a great tool if you would like to see how I layered everything for the model in this tutorial. Next, you will see the option to purchase only the Live 2D file that is fully rigged. This fully rigged Live 2D model is the exact same one I used in this hand rigging tutorial, so it's a great tool to see how the deformer and parameters work. And lastly, you have the option to purchase the full package. So it contains the Photoshop file, the Live 2D file fully rigged, as well as an unrigged version so you can follow along on this tutorial with the exact same asset that I use. It also contains a bonus VTube Studio file already set up for you to try. All you'll have to do is turn on your camera. And lastly, I want to go over a few disclaimers before we begin this tutorial. Number one. I am not a rigging expert, so I may call tools and resources something different than their official names, so I apologize in advance. I may also make mistakes, so please be kind, I'm doing my best, and I'm still learning this program. Number two, this method should not be considered the best and only way to rig hands. This is simply the way I personally rig hands, and may not be the best way. And number three, you will not be able to follow along if you are using the free version of Live 2D. This is because if you are using the Live 2D free version, the max number of deformers is 50, and this tutorial will use up a lot of that, so please keep that in mind before you proceed. Now that that is all out of the way, let's begin our hand rigging tutorial. Okay, so this first video is dedicated with showing you how you should set up your model for hand rigging. So this is the asset that you can buy from my shop. Again, you don't need to purchase it, but I'm gonna use it to illustrate everything in this tutorial and starting with how to separate your layers and how to prepare your model for hand rigging. So you will see that there are two arms up and then two arms down. So this is done on purpose. This makes it easier for when the camera recognizes your hand like this, it'll show it as up. But when the camera doesn't see your hand, your hand will go down. So the upper part, when the hand is up, that is when the camera sees your hand and the lower arm is when the camera does not see your hand. Before you prepare your model for hand dragging, so the arms and stuff like that, I want to let you know that later in this tutorial, I'm going to show you that you only really need to prepare one set of the arms. So for example, just one arm up and one arm down 
just make sure you label them accordingly. Make sure you have two forearms and two upper arms. Name them accordingly. And what we will do is we will copy and paste and just flip everything to the other side. So that will save you a lot of time and frustration and everything will look symmetrical. Next, I want to explain naming conventions here. So what I did is all of the um, pieces on this side. So the upper arm and lower arm, I'm calling this the right arm and the other arm, the left arm. Now you may think, hey, Opal, that's backwards. I mean, this should be the left arm and this should be the right arm. Really, it doesn't matter as long as it makes sense to you. But here's my reasoning. When you are operating your live 2D model, it operates like a mirror. So the camera is looking at you. When I raise my right hand, my character's left hand goes up and vice versa. For the sake of keeping things simple, and it just makes it easier on my brain, I'm calling this side the right arm because when I raise my right arm, that's the hand that shows up. My model has a shirt. So what I did, and this is something you need to keep in mind too when you're building your model, is I made a shirt for when the arms are up and a shirt for when the arms are down. So really, all you really need to make a copy of are the sleeves or anything on the arm of the model because when the arms are up and moving, they're gonna also move the, for example, in this situation, the t-shirt piece is gonna be moving along with the arm. So we want an extra t-shirt sleeve piece um, available for us to rig, but when the arms are down, we wanna make sure that uh, um, we have an extra piece for when the arms are down, just so it stays static. When you're setting up your hand, it is very important to make your hand look really clean and neat when it's moving, to have a colored layer on top of like a shadow layer in the back. So all that is is just the color piece being overlapped or overlapping the black piece. That's the exact same, just a little bit bigger than the color piece. And what that will do is when you turn your hand, it'll still give the illusion of line art, even though you're not really manipulating the line art, it's just a shadow section behind the color piece. So that's a really cool trick that I highly recommend you implement. You do not need to do this uh, black line or shadow piece for all of your model only just the hand and I don't even do that for the nails. The nails are completely separate. So it's really up to you, um, but at least please do this for all of the pieces and joints of your hand. This is where things begin to get a little bit complicated. Try to stay with me here. So what you're seeing here is an example of the left arm. So this is the left arm up and it kind of breaks things down on how I set up the hierarchy of things. So here are the fingers and here's the palm. Okay, so I separated my fingers into three parts because that's how the human hand works. There is the top part, there's a middle part and the third lower part where it connects to the palm itself. So each piece has a color component, which you can see here. And behind it, as mentioned before, there is a black line art or shadow component where this regular color pieces sit on top of the shadow to make the illusion of the line art pieces. So this is where it's very important to know what you are numbering your pieces just so you can find them easily and it makes sense to you. So this is the pointer finger. So pointer finger up, you look here, each piece, the color part and the black piece here is labeled as one, just like it is here. Same with the second piece, it's labeled as two. Same with the black piece, the 
color piece and same with three. You do not have to follow this. You can even flip it and make this three, two, one, three, two, one, A, B, C. It doesn't matter. It's just important that you understand that you need to label this in a way that makes sense to you, just so you don't get lost and you can find all of your pieces when you are rigging your hands. This is available to download for free if you go onto my asset shop for this hand rigging tutorial and download the hand rigging guide. I included this in the free hand rigging guide for you to use and refer to as you are rigging. So please make sure you go download this. I hope it's very helpful. There's one last thing I want to talk about the fingers and bring it to your attention. So what you need to do is if you want to rig each finger separately, like the pointer finger separate from the middle finger, separate from the ring finger and the pinky, etc. Make sure that you name it accordingly, just so you don't get all your finger parts, um, you know, confused. Because this piece looks pretty much the exact same thing as this piece. So that's why it's important to name it. Like for example, um, you can see here the pointer finger, I just did pointer right um, three, pointer right two, and the middle finger here. So I just click one of these parts just so I can locate it here. You can see that I did MF, short for middle finger, uh, one, two, three. So what this does is since these two pieces, for example, are very similar, it just makes everything clean and understandable so you know that this piece belongs to the pointer finger and this piece belongs to the middle finger. Also, there is an option where if you are kind of lazy like me and you do not want to rig every single finger separately, you can take all of everything you rigged for one finger, copy and paste it to become all of the other fingers. So what I did in this tutorial is I took the pointer finger, copied and pasted, and it became all of the other fingers. It does require some adjustment, but I will also show you how to make those adjustments just so things look nice and clean. To end things off, I want to talk a little bit about setting up your pieces and the hierarchy. So. In your drawing program, this is Clip Studio Paint, but you can also use Photoshop or whatever program can export your file um, into a Photoshop format to upload into Live 2D. It is important that you set up the hierarchy of each art piece before you upload it to Live 2D. You can change it in Live 2D, you know, if it's an emergency, it's no big deal, but it would be a pain to have to do that to all of your art pieces. For those of you that are curious on how I set up the hierarchy for my drawing items, I'll show you um, everything in the window here for the right arm. Everything for the left arm is the exact same thing as the right arm. It's just named differently instead of left arm, it says right arm, etc. Okay, so this is the right arm. I just decided to separate the arms um, into separate folders so it's easy to kind of divide them and understand what's going on. Then we have the right arm up and right arm down. In the right arm up, you have the forearm and the hand. So I have the forearm showing in the front and the hand right after. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to rig details such as paw pads and um, the scales and stuff like that you can see here. So make sure that you have all that prepared beforehand uh, before you put it into Live 2D. Put it in a folder so you know where to find it. And here are all my fingers. So I have pinky, ring, middle, pointer, thumb. So for pinky, I have it labeled as PF, short for pointer finger. So it's pointer finger, right nail up, the nails on top, 
then it is section 3 over top of section 2 over top of section 1 and these are all the color pieces and this will all go in front of the dark pieces which acts as the line art. This is the same thing for the ring finger. I have it labeled as RF, short for ring finger. It's the, pretty much the exact same setup as the other one, it's just name different. Same with the middle finger, MF, short for middle finger. And notice how, again, I have the black parts or the black lines um, clearly labeled differently than the regular color parts. Pointer finger is pretty much the same. And then the thumb is last. And then after that, you have the palm black line. So that's just saying like, Here's the color part of the, th of the palm, and here's the black part of the palm, and that's where it is right here. Before ending this video, I just want to make sure that it's super clear how to set up your upper arm versus your lower arm. So you see the lower arm here? I want to make it clear that you need to make sure that the forearm is separate from the hand and is separate from the upper arm. So we're just going to make that disappear. And then the arm up has its own separate upper arm and its own separate forearm that is separate from the hand. So I wanna make sure that when you are creating your own model that you have these pieces separate. The reason why you need to make sure that the upper and lower have their own separate components is because when the camera recognizes your hand and when it doesn't recognize your hand, I'm gonna show you how to make your model do a motion where once it's recognized, it kind of rotates into view, and when it's not recognized, it rotates back down. It's a cool little trick. If you don't really care if it has that rotating motion, don't worry so much, it can always just snap into view. But if you do wanna have that, make sure it is divided accordingly. Hopefully showing you how I set up my model and all of its pieces was helpful for you and you can get a better understanding on how to set up your model. I guess I just wanna stress that it's very important that you label all of your art pieces so you can find them and it makes sense to you. Your next step is to make sure that when you save your file, that it is saved as Photoshop format. So really all you need to do to do this is go File, Save As, and then there'll be a drop down option where instead of Clip Studio Paint format, if you're using Clip Studio Paint, um, there'll be an option to save it as Photoshop. So please make sure you do that. Um, save a backup copy if you're using Clip Studio Paint for um, your model just in case and that's the only format currently from what I understand Live2D will accept for direct import so please keep this in mind.